to make this spindle sanding drum for the drill press, first I cut 5 small plywood circles. Well, actually I cut 10 circles, because I will make two drill press drum sanders, so I can use each one with a different grid sandpaper. I have a very cheap low power drill press, so when I use a hole saw, it stops spinning if I press it too much against the workpiece. But if I continuously move the hole saw up and down the way you can see in the video, I have no problem to cut the pieces. But now I cannot insert this 10mm thread rod in the holes in the circles. So I will use a 10mm drill bit to enlarge those holes. Then this provisional table is still clamped in the same position. And I can use this circular mark to center the plywood circles. So I center the circle on that mark and very carefully I enlarge the holes. So now I can insert the third rod. I drill all the circles. And now I mount five of them in this third rod. Here I will put one washer and one nut. Then I will put one veering and then a couple of nuts. Then the thread rod goes like this. Here I will put another washer and another nut. And I think I can cut this here. I use some painter's tape to mark where to cut and I cut the thread rod. I file it And I make sure I can put there the nuts. And I do the same to cut another piece of thread or rod to make the other spindle drum sander. Before I forget, I must sand the plywood circles. Now I put there a self-locking nut. And I must leave enough room to put the bearing plus two nuts. Now I mix some epoxy. I pour it on the self-locking nut. I put a big washer on it. I pour more epoxy on the washer. And I put the first plywood circle. I pour some glue on the circle and I put the next circle and I put all five circles with some glue between them. Well, you probably have already realized that I had some problems with the camera focus and the lighting. I'll try to be more careful with that next time. Now on the fifth circle, instead of glue, I pour some epoxy. I put another big washer and more epoxy and one nut. Now I tighten the nuts to press the plywood circles. I clean the excess of glue and I let it dry and I make the other spinning drum sander. Now I center that piece of plywood on the drill press metallic table. I draw the shape of the metallic table grooves under the plywood piece and I will drill there two holes. I 
I insert two bolts and I hit them until I insert the bolts head in the plywood. Yes, precision carpentry. I put another piece of plywood on it, but it looks like it wobbles on it. So I hit the tip of the bolts and now I can screw both pieces together. I put this on the drill press metallic table and I use washers and wing nuts to clamp it. Now I put a bigger piece of plywood on them. I center it on them and I screw it. It looks like I have tilted the table, so I level it. Now this whole saw is some bigger than the one I've used to cut the plywood circles. I put it in the drill press chuck. I check that the table is perfect at 90 degrees with the hole saw and I tighten the nut that holds the metallic table. And now I drill, but just the first piece of plywood. Now this Forstner bit is the same diameter as the bearings I will use, so I use it to drill the other two pieces of plywood. I have to lift the drill press table, so I must center the Forstner bit on the whole saw drilling. And because I don't want to hit the metallic table, I finished drilling the pieces freehand. Now this is one drum sander. I put it in the chuck. And I think I can cut this piece of thread or rod. But now I think I've cut too much, so I left the other one some longer. Now I unscrew the top piece of plywood. And I have provisionally installed the bearings. So I installed the drum sander in the drill press jack. And I fit the bearing in the hole in the pieces of plywood. Now I put this piece of gross grid sandpaper on this piece of plywood. The edge of the sandpaper must be almost in the edge of the piece of plywood. And I hold it with some marquetry strips and some screws. So I will put this on the drill press table and against the column. Like this I can swivel it to sand and to through the drum sander. Now it is perfect. And here we can see the difference with the other drum sander. Now I draw a vertical line in each drum sander. And very carefully I cut a groove. This is the most difficult part, because it is very hard to clamp the drum sander correctly to cut it. The sandpaper must enter in the groove. And we must keep in mind that gross grid sandpaper needs a wider groove than fine grid sandpaper. Now I can install the bearing. This one is a bit loose. I put two nuts 
and I will tighten one nut against the other, but making sure the bearing is free. I protect the bearing and I spray some stencil adhesive. I wait the time the stencil adhesive manufacturer says I must wait and I glue this piece of sandpaper. To put the sandpaper I must keep in mind that I must roll it against the movement the drum sander will have when spinning in the drill press. Then I insert one end in the groove and I glue the sandpaper around the spinning drum sander. And here I have the spinning drum sander. Let's see how it works. I have already screwed the big plywood board. I fit the bearing in the hole in the plywood table. And let's try to sand this piece. As expected, it is very easy to use and it sands very well. The problem is that it makes a lot of sawdust, so it is necessary to use a dust mask. Maybe I'll try to make something to connect the vacuum cleaner. Thanks for watching. If you like this homemade sander, don't forget to click like and share. And if you like my videos, don't forget to subscribe to my channel.